What is a specific learning disorder and could you actually classify for such a diagnosis? If you have been struggling with reading, writing, or math-related tasks, then that could actually be you. The official criteria for a learning disorder are classified by the DSM-5, and that stands for Diagnostical and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders. So this manual provided the basic information for this video. First, I'm going to give you an overview of what a specific learning disorder actually is. Then we're taking a look at the official signs and symptoms that you might observe in yourself or in others. Then we're taking a look at the criteria that are not optional. And lastly, we're taking a look at the different severity levels that exist. A specific learning disorder falls under the category of a neurodevelopmental disorder. This means that the brain function and also the development and growth of the brain is affected. So if we, for example, compare the brain structure of a non-dyslexic with a dyslexic, you can actually tell the difference. Neurodevelopmental disorders is the umbrella category. And underneath you find conditions like communication disorders, ADHD, autism, and also our specific learning disorder. Now, if we zoom in even further, we see that our specific learning disorder is divided into three categories. First one would be a specific learning disorder with impairment in reading. The second one would be with impairment in written expression. And the last one is with impairment in mathematics. These different categories are basically the same as somebody telling you you got dyslexia, you got dysgraphia, or you got dyscalculia. So basically, if you struggle a lot with reading, writing, or math, you might qualify for a specific learning disorder. Only a licensed professional can give you this diagnosis, and this professional is normally a psychologist. In the past, the psychologist would have actually told you that you have dyslexia, dysgraphia, or dyscalculia. But the researchers found that these struggles often come as a package deal. So now when you receive a diagnosis, it will most likely say you got a specific learning disorder. Now let's take a look at the actual signs. The first area would be having trouble with reading. And this could look like reading things wrong or slowly, guessing words, or having a tough time sounding them out. Understanding difficulties is another area. You might read the words correctly, but then you miss the main point or you miss a connection that was pointed out. I often get to the end of the page and then I'm like, oh, okay, I need to read this again. Now we're moving on to signs that relate to writing. And one of those areas would be spelling issues. So you might make a lot of spelling mistakes. You might add or leave out letters that need to be written in a certain word. Other signs relate to writing problems. You might make a lot of grammar and punctuation mistakes, or you might have general trouble organizing your ideas into writing. Now, when it comes to math related issues, you might see that you have difficulty with basic math. So simple calculations might be difficult and also applying mathematical concepts uh, can be challenging. You might also heavily rely on your fingers when doing calculations. So out of the signs that I just mentioned, you have to struggle in at least one area for more than six months. Now the criteria that I'm not going to talk about are not optional. So they all need to apply to you in one way or another. So the first one would be that there is a significant performance gap between what you are able to do and what your peers are able to do. So given your age, people would actually expect you to do a lot better. Generally speaking, these difficulties start in early childhood while you're at school, but people around you might not notice your struggles until the schoolwork actually gets harder. At that point, you might lose your ability to cope and people really start noticing. The last criteria basically states that we need to make sure that you're not struggling because of something else. So you might not hear or see very well, and because of that, you have trouble with reading or writing. If that is the case, you're not getting diagnosed with a specific learning disorder. If you're simply not intelligent, or if you haven't gotten the proper education in the first place, then you also don't get a diagnosis. Psychologists will also make sure that you're not simply struggling because of a tough life situation or because of a different type of mental health diagnosis. If all these criteria actually apply to you, we now come to the severity levels. If one or two symptom areas are affected and you are able to get by with some accommodations, then that is considered a mild condition. If you have a moderate condition, one or more symptom areas are affected and you won't be able to get by without intervals of 
intensive and specialized teaching. For those of us who have a severe case of a specific learning disorder, multiple symptom areas are affected. And even though we are getting the right accommodations, the right type of help, we might still not be able to complete certain tasks. So on top of the signs and symptoms that I mentioned before, there's also a emotional, a psychological side to this condition. And this is a story that is often untold. So if you would like to learn more about that, click right here. And as always, thank you so much for watching.